in this lecture we will discuss about gauss's law for magnetism before starting discussion on gauss's law for magnetism let's recall gauss's law for electrostatics which says that the total flux to any closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon not times the total charge enclosed in that surface suppose we have a positive charge and electric field lines are diverging away from it now if we consider a gaussian surface around that charge then we can find the total flux through that gaussian surface and that total flux through gaussian surface is closed integral e dot da equal q or epsilon not like positive charge we have also a negative charge and electric field lines are originating from the positive charge and terminating at negative charge and the overall pattern of the electric field lines are like this this means that the positive and negative charges exist independently in the nature similarly to the gauss's law for electrostatics we can write the equation for gauss's law for magnetism and that is the total magnetic flux to any closed surface is equal zero what does this mean zero suppose we have a magnet having north pole and south pole electric field lines are coming in at the south pole and leaving at the north pole and you can see magnetic line magnetic field lines are closed loop and also in continuous form this means that the north and south pole always exist in pair and uh, magnet exist as a dipole <clears throat> and uh, the magnetic field lines are in continuous and closed form so this means that the magnet rather than magnetic charges the basics for magnetism is the magnetic dipole let's take an example of the bar magnet if you split the bar magnet into two pieces then you have two smaller magnets again having both north and south pole which means it's not possible to separate any pole so it means always you will have the north and south pole in pair form so this means that the magnetic monopoles does not exist alone in the nature now let's take a gaussian surface around this magnet and uh, to understand the total flux through that gaussian surface let's have a look the magnetic field lines which are coming in from the south pole and uh, leaving the gaussian surface at the north pole and with the same rate so this means the total net flux is zero based on these explanation we can define now the gauss's law for magnetism the definition would be that no magnetic monopoles exist in the nature as we have seen here and second the total net flux to any closed surface must be zero let's put it in another way to define the gauss's law for magnetism that is divergence b is equal to 0 what does divergence means divergence could be either positive or negative the in the case of positive charge when electric field lines are diverging away from it then this is a positive divergence and the negative divergence is if the electric field lines are terminating at the charge and that is the case of negative charge if is again you can see the pattern of electric field lines between the positive and negative charges to so conclusion 
is electric field lines originating from the positive and terminating at the negative but in the case of magnetic field if the current is passing through a wire then there is magnetic field lines are producing around the wire and those lines are uh, those lines are in a closed form and also in continuous form but here you can't define the originating point of the magnetic field lines and the terminating point of the magnetic field lines hence magnetic magnetic uh, magnetic uh, uh, charge doesn't, doesn't exist so it means that there is no point source for magnetic field and uh, there exists no magnetic analog to electric charge hence the overall conclusion from this lecture uh, of this lecture is that the electric field diverges away from positive but uh, magnetic field curls around the current electric field lines originating from the positive charge and terminating on the negative charge the magnetic fields don't begin or end anywhere and they typically form closed loops there are no point sources for b and the, the last one is the magnetic charge does not exist thank you so much